Hi, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here. If you're interested in batteries, get ready, as I'm going to map out what's been happening with solar state batteries, lithium anodes, and all things flying completely under the radar. So let's get into it. As always, all content in this video is our opinion only, and we do not recommend buying or selling any financial instruments. Now, I'm going to start off by playing a clip of what Elon Musk said during the 2018 shareholder meeting regarding when he expects to see a jump in energy density. No, this is the same clip that I showed in my previous video that covered Scylla nanotechnologies, but it's pretty important for what I'm going to be sharing with you today. When do you expect uh, significant battery advances to allow Tesla to pack twice as much energy into each of the batteries without increasing the size or weight? Twice as much is tricky, but we can certainly see a path to about a 30% improvement, maybe a 40% improvement in energy in the same size battery pack. That's technology we are confident does work, and it just it needs to be scaled up long term, probably double, long term by other people's standards. From a Tesla standpoint, we think probably two to three years to get to about a 30% improvement in volumetric energy density and um, six to eight years to get to a doubling. For, for that really big jump, a lithium anode is, is the key. Uh, just plate plating out pure lithium on the anode. So why is this statement and timeline so critical? Well, let me explain. But before I get into the details, let me just cover the basics quickly. In a standard lithium ion battery, you have the negative anode, which is made up of graphite, and the positive cathode, which is made up of nickel, cobalt, and aluminum, a separator in the middle to ensure that the battery doesn't short circuit, and a liquid or jelly-like electrolyte made up of salt solvents additives, which is the medium that lithium ions pass through and enable electrons to pass through a circuit and power an electric motor. One of the issues with current electrolytes is that they are flammable, and if you can make a solid, non-flammable material electrolyte, you would massively increase the safety and hence have a solid state battery. Also, solid state batteries are believed to be cheaper to produce, have higher energy density, and a longer lifespan than conventional lithium ion batteries. While the reason that lithium and silicon anodes are being researched is that silicon anodes can bond with 25 times more lithium ions than graphite, which substantially increases the energy density. But the downside is that silicon anodes can expand up to four times in volume as they bond with lithium ions and then contract again, which causes stress on the battery cell structure. But there are several companies that are working to solve these limitations and make them work. The first is Enovix, which patented 3D cell architecture, high capacity silicon anodes, which are stacked at a high pressure, which inhibits the expansion mentioned previously. Then there is Innovate, which claimed their technology development team has done the impossible by coming up with cell technology that combines fast charging, long range, low temperature performance, along with 350 watt hour per kilogram energy density. Not to mention, Innovate have co-inventor of the lithium ion battery and Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, John Goodenough as part of their advisory board. Then there's Scylla Nanotechnologies. Their CEO, Gene Berdachevsky, was employee number seven at Tesla, and board member Kurt Kelty led the Tesla battery team for over a decade. Scylla is also working on silicon anodes and plan to go market with their automotive partners BMW and Daimler next year, so something to definitely keep an eye on. Meanwhile, the team at the University of Texas Austin have developed a way of plating dendrite-free lithium anodes with a polymer ceramic polymer sandwich electrolyte. This could be a major breakthrough, as dendrites are sharp teeth-like structures that can grow inside a battery and cause major degradation, so solving this would be a major achievement. Moving on to solid state batteries. The first company I came across that is working on this technology is Colorado-based Solid Power, which claim that they are incorporating high capacity lithium metal anodes and creating a solid state cell with energy capacity of two to three times higher than conventional lithium ion cells. Interestingly, Solid Power announced that in April of 2019, they have received an investment from Ford to go along with Hyundai, Daimler and Samsung while working with BMW to validate their battery technology for the automotive market. So a lot of interest in Solid Power and their technology. Then there is California-based QuantumScape, which is also working on solid-state batteries, and received a $100 million investment from Volkswagen, which expect to begin offering solid-state battery solutions for their vehicles 
by 2025. Then there's Tel Aviv based StoreDot, which have created lithium ion batteries that are based on novel nano structured materials combined with proprietary organic binders and enhanced electrolytes. Daimler Trucks partnered with StoreDot back in September of 2017. Daimler has also invested in Blue Solutions for its buses to be equipped with Blue Solutions LMP solid state battery technology. And then there's Massachusetts based Ionic Materials that have made a solid state battery with a solid polymer electrolyte and have already attracted investments from Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi. Meanwhile in Japan, Toyota, Nissan and Honda, along with Panasonic, have formed a consortium named Libtech to develop solid state batteries with 500 miles of range to re-establish Japan's shrinking presence in the global battery field, even though Panasonic has said it doesn't expect solid state lithium batteries to be commercially viable for another 10 years. Meanwhile, what has Tesla been up to? Well, we all know about the acquisition of Maxwell and Hybar. But several days ago, Tesla published a patent for a 1 million mile battery by using numerous electrolyte additives to increase the longevity and performance of its lithium ion cells. Which means Tesla is taking their current lead in battery technology and extending it even further. So back to Elon's timeline, and if his estimates are correct, then we could be 5 years away from getting the huge jump that solid state batteries could make possible. And remember, a lot of experts say that Tesla has a 5 year lead in battery technology. Which means, other OEMs might just be thinking that it may not be worth investing into battery technology that works well now, but could be phased out in 5 years. And instead, focus their resources in solid state batteries, and make sure that they're backing the right research companies, so they're not left out when the technology is available. So who is taking the right approach here? Is it better to go with the status quo and invest in battery startups and hope they can deliver on next generation batteries? Well, Dyson tried this approach with its investment into Sakti3, a solid state battery startup that it acquired for 90 million with ambitions on developing solid state batteries and electric vehicles to rival Tesla. However, things didn't work out and they abandoned their patents. Tesla have some of the world's leading battery experts, and if they thought that solid state batteries were the answer, I have no doubt that they would move in that direction before anyone else. Not to mention, Tesla battery guru Jeff Dorn claims that new lithium ion cells outperform solid state batteries. It might sound crazy, but I wouldn't put this past Jeff Dorn and his team. So at the end of the day, while the other OEMs are waiting for the holy grail of solid state batteries to be developed by someone, Tesla is not waiting around and pushing their technological lead in battery technology even further. And that's all I have for you today. And I hope I was able to shed some light on solid state battery companies, what other OEMs are up to, and the reason that they seem to be sitting on their hands while Tesla powers ahead. So as always, thank you to the Patreons for making these episodes possible, and I'll see you guys soon.